what do international courts and tribunals do different that allows them to achieve much more positive results? In year 2000, this question took me to the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, ICTY, and ever since I have been visiting this tribunal every few years, and I have been interviewing interpreters, interpreter users such as counsel and judges. I have observed various trials from the public gallery, uh, the trials of uh, Milosevic, and more recently of Karadzic and Mladic. I examined the transcripts that allowed me to try and understand what are the good practices of the ICTY. And more recently, I began to visit the permanent International Criminal Court, also in The Hague, in order to see how the ICC has learned from the experience of the ICTY. There is a significant difference between uh, what we uh, are used to in the conference setting and the requirements of international courts. Uh, yes, it is true, interpreters work in the simultaneous mode, in teams, in booths. However, unlike in the conference setting, they are asked to interpret completely and be faithful to the style of the speaker. So unlike in the conference setting, they are not um, allowed to summarize, eliminate secondary information, embellish, polish the utterance of the speaker. They have to be at all times faithful to the content and the style of the speaker. And that's the main difference, to try and capture the entirety of what the speakers are saying. It is also for the benefit of um, a live transcript done through software. After verification, of the accuracy of the transcript against what was said by the speakers and by the interpreters, the transcript becomes the record of the hearing. Those conference interpreters whom I interviewed uh, who now work in both ICTY and ICC, in their majority were saying that they did have to adapt their interpretation style to a much wordier and much more complete rendition in the international courts. Uh, one of the areas where they had to pick up um, a large volume of vocabulary was understandably the legal uh, terminology. Let's not forget that we are not just talking about uh, the terminology of a common law system or a civil law system. We are talking about very specific hybrid jurisdictions of international courts. And what we encounter at ICTY is quite different from ICC. So some elements might be similar, but the concepts and terminology are often very different. So how do you overcome the lack of equivalence in lexical and legal field that exist between not only the two official languages, English and French, but also between these working, these official languages, and the so-called situation languages. Uh, for example, at ICC, and I understand it's a different topic, but at ICC, a terminology unit had been set up well ahead of the trials, which was an excellent idea because the terminology unit took care of coining these newly created legal terms that were in the process of being coined. I think training interpreters who currently learn conference interpreting uh, can be very helpful in understanding that there is another setting. Uh, the setting of international uh, courts where interpretation is done in the simultaneous mode. So in a way we are now beginning to look at two different models of conference interpreting. Not only the traditional format of um, a conference interpreter, 
but also that of a court interpreter who works in a booth in the simultaneous mode. I have observed at the ICTY and ICC that interpreter uses, and I would stress that probably the main ones are presiding judges, are much more aware of the limitations of interpreting, no matter how good the training has been and no, no matter how qualified interpreters are, um, but that interpreter uses play a very important role in contributing to the quality of interpretation. Interpreter users try to speak more slowly than they would speak in a conference setting. Uh, they draw attention of the speakers to not speaking too fast, not overlapping, to avoid overlapping between speakers. They make sure to distribute written documents that they read out. They refer to the number of the documents and to specific page numbers if they are being quoted. The acceptance that interpreters are not machines, that they have to sometimes intervene in the process, this is also something that has become a lot more prominent. Interpreters tend to be intervening more frequently by adding comments such as interpreter's correction or interpreter's note and they would self-correct immediately or they would address the presiding judge by asking for, for the speaker to slow down or they would ask for a repetition if uh, something has been omitted from, from the interpretation and therefore from the court transcript. The setting and the demands of international courts are incredibly challenging. Even though working conditions, um, one can say, are very good, especially compared to interpreters in domestic settings. Interpreters are well remunerated. Um, the length of the week and the number of working hours um, are consistent with the demands of AIC and conference interpreting, more broadly speaking. I believe that it is of crucial importance for the judiciary and counsel in the domestic courts to be aware of international court standards, because these are the standards that enable professional interpreting an effective and efficient interpreted communication. Domestic courts do not deserve any less than that. And even though they do not have the same uh, funding and the same international profile as international courts do, however, it is important to have some aspirational goals. So the repercussions can be, for example, the improvement of interpreters' terms of employment conditions of their work, preparation, training,